There are three main types of Alzheimer's disease, all of which are characterized by the same set of symptoms, as well as the same brain pathology of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. Um, really, the difference between these three types of Alzheimer's disease is when they occur. And so there is an early onset type of Alzheimer's disease, which occurs before the age of 65. This early onset Alzheimer's is relatively rare and is usually associated with individuals who have Down syndrome. Um, one reason for this is that APP, or the amyloid precursor protein, which generates amyloidogenic A-beta and potentially A-beta plaques, is actually the gene encoding that protein is located on chromosome 21. And individuals with Down syndrome have trisomy 21, or three copies of chromosome 21. And that excess of APP, because of the excess copy, one extra copy of the gene, is likely what leads to this early onset Alzheimer's. The second type of Alzheimer's occurs after the age of 65, um, but is familial or genetic in nature. This accounts for about 5% of the cases of Alzheimer's disease that we see. And some genetic components for familial AD or FAD have been identified, um, and some mutations in these particular genes here lead to the increased risk for developing um, Alzheimer's disease. Mutations in the amyloid precursor protein, or APP, as well as mutations in persinolin 1 and 2 have been linked to Alzheimer's disease. And what's interesting about this is that uh, mouse models, genetic mouse models for Alzheimer's disease, actually include mutations in all three of these individual genes uh, to make that transgenic Alzheimer's model and make it kind of as accurate as possible. But what you'll notice about familial AD or this really genetic form of Alzheimer's disease is that it only accounts for about 5% of all Alzheimer's cases. 80 to 90% of cases of diagnosed Alzheimer's are late onset or LAD um, Alzheimer's disease. These also occur after the age of 65, but they're what's known as sporadic or random, meaning that there has been no genetic component, no mutation that has been identified in patients who have late onset Alzheimer's disease. And what you can see here are some numbers of individuals who have late onset, late onset Alzheimer's disease in the United States. Um, while there is no mutations identified that contribute to late onset Alzheimer's disease yet, there is some study of one particular gene called APOE that seems to um, potentially be mutated in people who have late onset Alzheimer's. Um, and so the genotype um, of your APOE gene may actually contribute to your Alzheimer's disease risk. And so APOE genotype, um, as I said, is so far the biggest genetic risk factor that's been identified for developing sporadic or late onset Alzheimer's disease. And APOE is the gene that encodes an apolipoprotein called apolipoprotein E or APOE. And um, apolipoproteins are proteins that basically bind to and help transport cholesterol and other lipids in the blood. So in the brain, APOE has a function of helping maintain the blood-brain barrier. And it's secreted relatively heavily by glia, such as astrocytes and microglia in the brain. And so both of these types of glia need to make a lot of APOE as well as secrete it. And like I said, that helps to maintain the blood-brain barrier. An APOE gene has three different forms or three alleles. It has an E2, an E3, and an E4 allele. Um, an E2 allele, or this form of the APOE gene, is often found to be protective against Alzheimer's disease. E3 allele seems to be relatively neutral. It doesn't contribute to Alzheimer's disease risk either way. Whereas the E4 allele is sort of the bad allele. And having uh, E4 allele increases your risk of developing 
uh, late onset Alzheimer's disease. So in the general population, the risk of developing late onset Alzheimer's disease is about 10%. People who have one copy of the bad E4 allele for the APOE gene have about a 40% chance of developing late onset Alzheimer's disease, which is an increase in thir of 30%. And individuals who are homozygous E4 individuals or have two copies of the E4 allele have almost a 50 to 60% chance of developing late onset Alzheimer's disease. And you can see this in this chart here. Individuals who are E2, E2, or have two copies of the um, E2 allele, actually have an extremely low risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. Um, whereas somebody who has two copies of the E4 allele, an E4, E4 individual, has a huge risk of developing late onset Alzheimer's disease. And you can see here the prevalence of these mutations in the pop, or these genotypes, I'm sorry, in the population. The most common by far is the E3, E3 allele, which is sort of the neutral phenotype. Does not necessarily contribute to risk for developing Alzheimer's either way. Um, and so one thing that um, we hope to be able to do in the future is to sort of diagnose people's potential risk for developing late onset Alzheimer's by looking specifically at their APOE genotype. Um, and this APOE genotype if it's E4, E4, will tell us that they have a higher chance of developing Alzheimer's, and we might be able to put into effect some preventative measures uh, beforehand. This uh, current table or here describes the genotype frequency and risk in Caucasian populations. The APOE genotype has also been studied in other populations um, and shows relatively the same level of risk for developing LAD um, in different racial groups as well.